magnitude of the acceleration or perhaps the centripetal acceleration of the cyclist as it goes around the curve is v squared over the radius of the curve. And so we can say that because the road is horizontal, the only frictional force of the road on the tires, this is what makes this acceleration, this centripetal acceleration possible. So the horizontal component of Newton's second law would simply be the frictional force equaling the mass times the centripetal acceleration v squared over r. And so if the force normal is a normal force um, on the, of the road on the bicycle, and then mass would, of course, be the mass of the bicycle rider system, we know that the force normal is equaling the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So, of course, the gravitational force. We can then say that the maximum static frictional force is going to be equaling to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the force normal, equaling the coefficient of static friction multiplied by mg. Now, if the bicycle does not slip, this means that the friction needs to be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction, mg. Now, this means that v squared over r must be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by g. Or we can say that then r, the radius of the curve, must be greater than or equal to the velocity squared divided by the coefficient of static friction multiplied by g. So the minimum radius, we can say, r min, would be equaling to velocity squared over coefficient of static friction multiplied by g. This is going to be equaling to 29 kilometers per hour multiplied by 1,000 meters per kilometer multiplied by one hour for every 3,600 seconds. And then this entire term is going to be squared. This will be divided by 0.32 multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared. And we find that the minimum radius of the curve is going to be equaling to 21 meters. This would be our final answer. That is the end of the solution. Thank you for watching.